Getchell from New Lenox, Illinois. 68 Camaro, 427 equipped, qualified number five at 968.7, 144. In the tower lane, the Chicago Chevrolet dealers, Gary Drink, Motorsport Research prepared from Arlington Heights, Illinois, the 73 Vega. Both cars in the bleach box coming out on their burnouts, and Drink lays down a great path tower lane in that thundering Vega. Gary Drake qualified number one with a 944, 147 miles per hour. The hustler Frank Getchell, spectator lane after the first burnout, bringing the machine back. 1968 Camaro 427 that Frank sets in the saddle of. There comes burnout number two as he makes the dry hookup burnout look good. Well, Billy, I can see Frank Getchell really letting fly on this one, trying to catch that light. Gary Drank on the first round didn't hit that light very well. Of course, he might not have been trying to hit it that well because it was the qualifying round, but I would say that he cannot let Getchell get too far out on him. Well, the two-tenths of a difference right now between the two machines is not really all that great down here in the starting line, and I would say those two-tenths represent about a car length, so if Getchell can move that much on Gary Drank, he could have him in trouble. Drink in the tower lane, however, I would say rates among the best as far as moving on the tree. So I don't think he's going to let Frank get out too far on him. He may play it a little cautious, but I'm sure he will not be overly cautious. Frank brings the car up now, spectator lane. Gary already in the beam tower lane. The hustler eases into the blue light. The tree begins its countdown. And on green. The Hustler, Getchell with a half a car length on drink, but no way the Chicago Land Chevrolet Dealers makes the move. Tower Lane, your winner, with another fantastic 9.42 top mile per hour, 147 miles per hour. In the Spectator Lane, Getchell gave it a good try at 9.71, 144 miles an hour, but Gary Drink, Tower Lane gets the win. The next car up, Spectator Lane, Jim Pullman, South Holland, Illinois, 1972 Vega, 468, a very tough machine. In the tower lane, it's the superstar, Frank Galinsky from Calumet, Illinois, Van Sena's sponsored Camaro, qualified in at 982, 144 miles per hour, an all nine-second quarterfinal field. Superstar Tower Lane, Frank Galinsky in the number eight spot. Pullman in lane one in the number four spot. And about two-tenths of a second separate these two machines with Pullman in lane one, the quicker of the two qualifiers. Vega going against Camaro once again. Jim Pullman checking out to make sure he's right in his tracks. Gives it a little click, moves it forward. Galinsky, the superstar, the tough Camaro in the tower lane, moving forward. Pullman running extremely well. He's got this little Vega performing. He certainly The eight cars that qualified this afternoon for the program, five of them were Camaros, three of them Vegas. Lane number one into the beam. Superstar tower lane set. The lights go green and out of the gate. Superstar stays right with Jim Pullman. But Galinsky's having handling problems, and that loses him about a car length on the top end. Pullman Lane won the winner, 971, 145. Frank Galinsky, superstar, skating the quarter mile at 10 seconds flat, 141 miles per hour. So now Jim Pullman joins Gary Drink and Kenny Perry in the semifinal round as we come to the last pair in this quarterfinal round. Lane one, George Bellhan, Hazelcrest, Illinois. King Speed Shop sponsored 73, Vega. This one, Balhan, Holger, and Tilly maintained is very tough. They qualified number two at 953, 147. In the tower lane, the shotgun of the super pro stock drivers, Jerry Krasinski and Jerry and Gene's pit stop gang Camaro. The old Bunny and Clyde team qualifying in at 971, 146 miles per hour. And in this quarterfinal round, if one race had to be considered fairly even because of the move by one of the two competitors on the light, I would say it would have to be this one. Krasinski Tower Lane, even though he's almost two tenths behind Balhan in time, can definitely make it up. Jerry is really good on the light, and George will have all he can handle on this run. 
As you said, Billy, two tenths is one good car length out of the gate. And we've seen Jerry Krasinski time after time do that, pull that one car length gate job out of the gate, put the favorite competitor out. Let's see if he can do it again this time. Bellhand looks as though he is cocked in the staging gate, Billy, and Jerry Krasinski looks like he's flat in the groove. Krasinski Tower Lane slowly coming up. He doesn't want much of that blue light. If you don't think he's not going for it, you are mistaken. He's going to shoot the lights, and here he comes, and Krasinski makes the move. He's out there half a car length and moving well. Lane number one, uh, George Bell, and pushing top end. He's going to have a tough time, and it is lane number one. What a run. Bell had to really go on the top end to get around him. 9.54 for George Bellhand, 9.54, 1.49, but wait till you hear the time on Krasinski Tower Lane. Jerry Krasinski with his best run of the year, Billy, at 9.67, 145 miles per hour. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the semifinal round, it will be three Vegas and one Camaro as the upper bracket holds its own in the quarterfinal round. Kenny Perry with a best of 954, 147 miles per hour will have the lone Camaro in the program. In the number two position will be Gary Drake with the number one qualifying low lapse time of the meet, 942, 147 miles per hour. Jim Pullman in another Vega, his best time, 966, 146. And George Balhan with two 950s, the quicker of the two, 953, 147. And once again, another Vega. So three Vegas and one Camaro in the semifinal round of Pro Stock Competition. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move to the second round of the National Touring Wheel Stand Champions. In lane number one, the world's quickest two-wheel machine, and by two wheels I mean that's the way he runs the quarter mile. The Hemi under glass wheel stander of Bob Riggle with Zach Zakoa as the mechanic on this machine. He has been as quick down the quarter mile as 942, 160 miles an hour. That is a world record two-wheel wheel stand run. And Bob Riggle this year, Billy, moving into the flip top funny car type configuration with his wheel standing machine. In the tower lane, talk about configuration. Jack Ehrmantraut in Bob Perry's Hell on Wheel tank, sponsored by the United States Army. Hell on wheels in the tower lane, coming down to the bleach box, ready to have the VHT poured underneath the tires. And I don't even know how the mechanic can find the tires. I certainly don't see them from here. Lane number two, hell on wheels, the Army-sponsored Sherman tank. And in the spectator lane, Bob Riggle, Hemi under glass, and here comes Bad Bobby. Oh, have you ever heard horsepower out of a tank like that? Wow, hell on wheels, tower lane, Jack Ermintrout. And Billy, you notice the Bob Perry tradition there with the stacks coming out of that tank, the big stacks, just like he used to have on his old wheel standing machine. That's right. At one time, of course, he was touring a Corvette wheel stander called the Fugitive, and the exhaust stacks were very identical to the ones you see on this tank. Notice the real long wheelie bars coming way out the back of Hell on Wheels here in the tower lane. They jut way out behind it, and that is unusual. In lane number one, Riggles probably come back about two feet from the rear wheels, where the tower lane seems to be more like three to three and a half feet. All right, Billy, they're moving forward. Bob Riggle moving up to the staging beam. Jack Ermantrout, the Hell on Wheels tank, moves forward as they prepare to stage. Riggle getting the win in the first heat. Bob Riggle, lane number one, very capable of well over 1,300 foot runs on two wheels. And both of them go airborne. The Hell on Wheels tank this time's carried it a long way, but Riggle in lane one running away from him. Riggle on a great pass, spectator lane, but both of them go all the way. Pass in the tower lane. Absolutely an incredible performance by both of these beautiful machines. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. And in lane number one, the time on Riggle, 1041 at 133 miles an hour, a two-wheel run to the quarter mile. Both of them made it all the way. 
the Hell on Wheels tank with a great 1241, 104 miles per hour up on the half track. Coming back right now, Jack Urban Trout. Let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. An unusual and spectacular machine. The wheel standing Hell on Wheels Sherman tank coming down spectator lane. A US 30 welcome for him now for that full 1320 foot pass. And apparently he wants a little bit more of the action race van. He goes back into lane number one and Ermintrout is not through yet. He comes back down to the starting line and wants to make another run apparently in the Hell on Wheels tank. And how can you do any better than he just did on the last run? But Jack wants another shot at it and he'll do it this time in lane one. Incredible, Billy. This guy is really something else. He certainly is, Ben, and on this run he did not quite get it up all the way like he did on the first one, but still he's driving it all the way through in lane number one. He went through at 136 miles an hour on that run, but of course it was down all four wheels on the ground. That's a moving tank. Well, I'll tell you one thing, if uh, back in World War II they'd have had a tank like this to work with and could go that fast, they wouldn't have to worry about those big bullish German tanks being too almost indestructible to have to do force with. They'd just run away from them. They wouldn't have any problems with them. Well, I think what's so unusual, Billy, about that tank is the way it looks. You know, it just, just doesn't look like it could get up on the up there and do that job. Well, that's for sure. It doesn't look like it's got any chance of making those kind of wheel stand passes, but he just showed us when he made the run in lane number two in the tower side that he could make that full 1,320 foot pass, and he did it, and did it in a little over 12 seconds. Of course, Bob Riggle, enough said when you see him run one time, he's just unbelievable. It's kind of hard to believe that anybody could do what he does and do it as quickly as he does. He's run that quarter mile in just a little under nine and a half seconds. That's unreal. Andy Tankus, would you please report to the front office? Andy Tankus, please report to the front office. The championship run in the AA Fuel Dragsters is down on the roller starts and about ready to take place. Dick LaHaye, who was the number three qualifier in the qualifying round and was not a good enough time to get him in, will come in as the replacement car because of the breakage on Frito Bandito, Gene Domogowski's machine. They kicked a rod out of the car on the run, so they will not be back and will be replaced by Dick LaHaye. This time, LaHaye, who apparently has won the coin toss, chose the right lane because the last time down the track, he had the left lane, and of course, the left lane did not offer the bite he was looking for because we had had an oil droppage problem earlier. Coming up now from the bottom end of the racetrack, ladies and gentlemen, the Hemi Under Glass. Coming your way, please give him a nice round of applause for this spectacular machine as he comes by you. Boy, that's really an unusual looking machine. Billy looks like a super fuel funny car and runs like a rocket. That's just unbelievable. Bob Riggle has done a tremendous job once again here this afternoon at US 30. The body up as he's being towed down the track. And if you didn't know that it wasn't a funny car, you'd have an awful tough time finding out. About the only thing would tell you that it may not be a funny car is the fact that the engine sets behind the driver. But there are a couple of rear engine funny cars in existence. They are rare. I don't think Riggle would have a lot of trouble converting this into a regular funny car. It's probably a little bit heavier than a funny car. But nevertheless, it has a very distinct resemblance to the Superfuel Funny Cars. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a great round of applause to the captain himself, Bob Riggle Hemi Underglass. And he's really a big dude, Billy. <laughs> Bob Riggle really fills that entire roll cage. He comes in to talk to him. You kind of look up at him. Him, him and Kenny Safford would make a, a good combination. One thing Bob Riggle never lacks to have, Ben, and that is a big, broad smile on his face. He's always in a happy-go-lucky, good mood. A great guy, Captain Bob Riggle, the Hemi Under Glass pilot. And here comes Jack Urban Trout, Billy, and he's hanging out of the cockpit there of his tank. 
Let's hear it for Jack Urbantrout fans as he comes by you the Hell on Wheels tank from Florida. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He is conqueror of all in this machine. And as you said before, it's just hard to believe that he is able to put that thing in the air at all. It just seems like the only thing it should do is just kind of putt-putt down the track. And now a great US 30 welcome race fans for Jack Ehrmantraut's Hell on Wheels. Some looking machine. And boy, he sets out of that uh, cockpit area just a lot like they would if they were having a regular tank like they did back in those days of World War II. It sure resembles that a lot. That's something. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in preparations for the finals of the National Touring AA Fuel Dragsters. The championship of today's event is on the roller starts. In the right lane, Dick LaHaye, 31-year-old Lansing, Michigan-based driver, 12 years in drag racing, has now fired his machine up and starts his way to the bleach box burnout area. In the tower lane, Marvin Schwartz from Clearwater, Florida, the biggest drag racing engine in the United States, 520 cubic inch of uh, 5 8 inch Stroker Chrysler, self-built with a best time of 614, 234 miles per hour. Dick Clay up on the haunches and through the burnout in lane number one, and here comes 20-inch motored Marv Schwartz tower lane. Over 2,000 horsepower each, Billy, as they unleash it. And one of the amazing things is to watch the way those tires grow when they hit the throttle. Boy, that's just unbelievable, Ben, and that is the reason that they are so wide. The wider they are, the more they can grow in height. And, of course, that makes a big difference in the rear end ratio, so the cars are set to take all those things into consideration. LaHaye in lane number one, looking for revenge against Marv our Schwartz Tower Lane. In the qualifying round, it was Schwartz to the quarter mile quicker in lane number two. And Marvin throwing out some nitro there, Billy. Either the machine is really loaded heavy or it may be ailing in that number one bank there on the left side. Looks like the number one cylinder left bank is ailing a little bit. He is throwing some vapor out of there. He could be pumping his overflow water in there, but it's doubtful with as much vapor coming out of that header. LaHaye in lane one looks to have a problem in the right bank and one of the cylinders over there.